Good morning, everyone. My name is Kang. I'm here from IMU. Welcome to IMU's very first dialogue with the CEO. We've been planning this for quite a while, so this is our very, very first event. But before we start, I also want to uh, wish everyone a very happy Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year uh, on the 18th of February today. And today we've got a wonderful guest. We've managed to uh, identify an, uh, a CEO by the name of Haswan Najib, all right? And he's representing Doctor on Call. Now, in case you're not aware, and I think because it's a new event, this dialogue with the CEO is organized by IPCDU, that's I, uh, Industry Partnership and Career Development Unit from IME. And one of the roles and our interest is uh, to have a platform whereby IMU can engage with industry leaders uh, so that for students to understand the importance of essential skills and to provide a platform in which we can encourage a spirit of entrepreneurship. Okay, Haswan, I was just introducing you and I'm introducing the, uh, the session. So, okay, starting, starting of which, okay, I was just introducing why we're having the, the uh, dialogue with CEO. And uh, there is a purpose. We want to introduce entrepreneurship. Now, nothing better than to speak to entrepreneurs themselves. And today we are having an interview or a dialogue really with Hasman Najib. And a little bit about him. He's the co-founder of Doctor on Call Malaysia. He started Doctor on Call more than three, day, three years ago with his partner and former colleague, Maran. And he did this after spending months on studying of the trends and the growth of telehealth industry globally. And now, Doctor on Call is one of the leading platforms uh, of telehealth in Malaysia. He has been spending more than 11 years before this in another, another workplace, and that's with Ascension, focusing on banking and the insurance industry. So we also would like to find out from him how he shifted his focus from Accenture to now being a CEO in Doctor on Call. So, Aswan, if you're ready, continue. Just introduce yourselves and tell us who you are and what you represent. Aswan, to the, you. Thank you for the very, very nice introduction, Dr. Kang. Uh, thanks, Najwa and Doreen, for hosting. Right. My name is Hazwan. Um, as Dr. Khan mentioned, I have uh, started Dr. On Call about four years ago. Right. But, but maybe I go back a bit, like maybe about 15 years to see where I started. Right. So I was a student of uh, actuarial science. I studied in the US. Um, you know, in actuarial uh, science, when you're studying, you're very focused in terms of what you want to become after university. Right, and, uh, and all you care about is the exams, the actuarial exams. But uh, little did I know that as soon as I graduated, I said, okay, the actuarial science, um, uh, I'm gonna try something else, right? Uh, I'm not gonna do uh, calculating the, the insurance race and all that. So I'm gonna try management consulting because I think it's wider, learning about business process. Um, so I get to see more clients. So I joined this firm called Accenture. So in Accenture, uh, basically we do strategy, management, consulting, uh, a lot of work with the multinationals uh, and I've uh, traveled around the region for about 10 years. So uh, in, in this firm, right, all you do is uh, problem solving, right? So you solve clients problem, right? So you solve whether the client have a cost issue, whether the client have a, a operational issue, whether the clients have a business issues, Right, you you go ahead and, and solve them, regardless of what industry or what your background is. Uh, so so that's where we learn that um, if you think that uh, only nuclear scientists will solve nuclear problems, right? That that's not gonna work because uh, you need all hands on deck when you want to solve a, a problem, right? So after spending ten years uh, in this in this uh, particular uh, firm, I start to focus on banking and financial services industry. And I've seen revolution of banking, right? Um, 
you know how we used to back in 2000 i'm sure like dr kang is not the probably not the first one to use uh, online banking when it was first introduced right you always have this hey, how could i move money from uh from uh, this account to this account without actually taking the money and then put it back mm-hmm. right and then like, i'm sure our parents would be like oh i don't trust this online banking thing i don't know where my money goes yeah right but now you see how bank moves from branch you know you have to go to the branch to take money out to put money in and then they move to atm yep right and then they move to right online banking and then now like online banking you never touch online anymore uh, so you have to go it's a, it's a mobile banking you now mm-hmm. right so that that revolution shows like uh, how the banking industry revolutionized the thing and it's not overnight right mm-hmm. it takes some time for people to accept that you can actually transfer money right now without actually going to the bank mm-hmm. right and they try to make it as simple as possible so um towards the end of my career in uh, in this firm i started to think let's look at other industries right and we stumbled into healthcare um that time uh, maren uh uh Uh, my 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 partner was uh, he he's also same background as me like uh, in consulting he has uh, he own a couple of clinics right and then we start to uh, try to see okay what's going on in healthcare industry right uh, to our, to my surprise right so so in my view as a normal layman person i'm not a doctor i'm not a i've always been a patient right so when as a patient okay when you're sick you go to the clinic you get medication you step out right so so that that's all the view that we have but you don't know what the whole thing that's going on behind the scene right um so we don't know like how to uh, whether uh okay how does the doctor even the you know things like how does doctor make decision when you're not well right is it is it based on data is it based on observation so so um the other thing is uh there's this whole mammoth industry of healthcare is a growing industry right yep. so i mean everyone get older everyone get sick uh, every single year right and inflation wise is growing about 20% year on year so one of my last client in uh, when i was uh, doing the consulting work they spend about a billion dollars a year in healthcare alone so what's going on why is it so expensive right is it so um So, so to look at the the the, uh, the 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 trends right in the US how people do healthcare in China how people do healthcare in uh, in India how they do healthcare with 1 billion people on the uh, on their land right mm-hmm. do they have enough doctors mm-hmm. right so their ratios are not great like i mean we are we are blessed because in Malaysia right whenever you're sick you there's that there in in the urban areas right, there are doctors around the corner right um So I realized that in terms of digital disruption or technology innovation, uh, healthcare uh, as an industry is la- lagging about 15 years, right? So all the evolution of the fintech that's happening in banking, mm-hmm. right? It's quite lagging in healthcare because the same thing are uh, it's still the same thing that everyone is doing in the industry from 20 years ago to now. Mm-hmm. All right? So I see okay this is an opportunity I want to fix um uh, I I want to close the gaps right I'm a patient I see some certain things that why do I uh, for instance I or why do I need to go see the doctor uh, every single time I've already gone to the clinic I have already done the blood test right uh, and then why can't I discuss the result with the doctor uh, on the phone right why, why why is it not possible so i start to uh, question all this challenging the status quo right uh, and and that's when we we started doctor on call okay right so we want to close that gap and i want to solve my own problem <laughs> so <laughs> there is a self interest part in it also lah yeah 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 okay but by that time i i have one uh, daughter uh, by that time i said I uh, I cannot be rushing to the pediatrician mm-hmm. every single time, right? I just want okay, there's a small rash here. I just want to show a photo, and then how can the pediatrician help me? He can probably like tell me like what I might already have the medication at home, 
right? So why can't he tell me like what do I need to do? So so those kind of things that I think like uh, that that's when we say that okay maybe it's time for healthcare to move the low risk, low uh, complexity, uh, and now like COVID, right? You see how they move from hospital to home monitoring. So it can be done <laughs> technically, but uh, you know when you started this journey. 100 people, I mean, you know, you ask 100 people, you know, 99 people says it can't be done. It's not safe. <laughs> and that's what, what I wanted to ask you. Obviously, you, you already said that you're not from the healthcare background, meaning you're not a doctor, right? No, I'm not, you, yes. You're from actuarial that's science, correct. am I right? That's correct. So when you started this plan or you not know, to start your business, was there a lot uh, of naysayers? people against your plan? Or how did you get past all these naysayers? Uh, so, uh, Dr. Kang, um, I started four years. It's been four years, right? Mm -hmm. The first two years, 90% uh, people would say no to you. 90%, mm -hmm. yeah? So you ask 10 people, nine would say, no, it won't work. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, we're not interested, okay. right? Um, for the first two years. <laughs> so uh, there, there, there's this saying when people start a company or a startup or entrepreneurs, right? You must survive your first two years. Okay. If you don't survive your first two years, then it's very hard, right? So the first two years is uh, not to run out of money okay. or to survive. Let the seed sail, right? <laughs> your time will come. Okay. Yes. So once you get past the first two years, is it easier now after the third and the fourth year? Uh, yes, I would say, uh, so So I'll tell you a bit more on my journey in Dr. Ong Call, just now how it started now, um, how Dr. Ong Call uh, grew, right? Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we took the, we saw some of the global players, we, we changed, uh, we, we designed our platform. Uh, the key is, um, we, we designed it quite quick, quick, right? Now about six months. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, late 2000, uh, late um, uh, second half of 2016. Mm -hmm. Get it up and running. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, the thing is, um, we right now, uh, as you said, right, right now we go to the clinic mm -hmm. and then we get medication. Mm -hmm. We see a doctor get medication and come out. Okay. For us, how do I create an in clinic experience online? Mm -hmm. Right? So I spoke to so many doctors. I said, okay, doctors, tell me uh, what is a, whenever patients come into your door, right? Tell me the step one, two, three, four, five, or how many steps you have, right? No one can give me an answer. I said, okay, because uh, in the previous life, I'm so used to process and SOPs. So I'm sure like, you know, step one, uh, look at the patient or step two, right? So I, I was uh, approaching the healthcare or doctors, uh, I mean, um, world, in a very, um, uh, uh, I would say, uh, amateurish, uh, in a very layman's manner, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me. Uh, I, so, but no one can give me an answer until like the, I said, okay, then I have to make my own deduction, right? Okay, the first step, doctors need to uh, see what is the patient complaint mm -hmm. uh, and, and next step and so on. So I'm not going to give a, a, a medical lecture here, but then that's what I observe. I don't even know whether that's a protocol for it. Mm -hmm. Right, so then okay, let's create this. And then for in, in many countries, uh, the medication and the doctors are separated, right? So the, you don't necessarily, uh, in some countries, in many countries, you don't necessarily come out of the clinic with a, a medication. But here, uh, people want medication, mm -hmm. right? Uh, every time they come out of the clinic. In fact, like, you know, if uh, somebody was saying that if the doctor doesn't give a medication, they say it's not a good doctor. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you ask my mom, it's like, oh, the ubat pun tak bagi. <laughs> but but I have a then I also I have a German neighbor at that time uh -huh. who says like I don't understand Malaysian doctors they always give medication. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, what is your problem, right? Of course you want medication <laughs> when you're sick. So 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 um, it, it's very perplexing, but it's very interesting problem to 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 get into as well, right? So then I started to to look at some data. Right, I say, okay, there are about 100 million visits to outpatient doctors in Malaysia mm -hmm. every year. 
So Malaysian likes to go to see doctor, right? So three, four times a year. So every Malaysian. Yeah, some people go every month, some people go twice a month. Mm -hmm. But the 100 million visits, right? Um, then I said, okay, does this 100 million visit, right? Um, someone asked me, okay, how many can be done virtually? Mm -hmm. right? Because Dr. Ronko is a telehealth, right? Yep. I said, uh, I don't know, let's see the data. Then, then first, my first set, I, I went to the clinic and to see what, um, of, I, I sit down with a few doctors. I asked doctor, tell me honestly, right? You know, this person, is it, can it be done uh, virtually or it has to come? In? So, so we found, okay, maybe 50-50 that time, mm -hmm. but half, half, right? Doctor said, okay, this is a follow-up. It can be done virtually or, mm -hmm. so, um, and this is a, a long-term patient. It can be done virtually. So do we have a few good, uh, uh, founding doctors that help us out mm -hmm. in terms of understanding the doctor's world. And the way we approach it in a very non-medical uh, manner, because both Maran and I, we're not doctors, which is very refreshing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we we kind of like a, a bit more cowboys in terms of taking things, uh, uh, the approach, right? So we just keep challenging the... Uh, when, you, when someone says, no, it cannot be done, you just ask five times why it cannot be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, um, then you find out, oh, the actual problem is, it's not so much that it cannot be done. It's actually the council that says, that doesn't give a clear direction, like say Malaysia Medical Council doesn't give a clear direction on whether or not it can be done. So if, if, if you follow the rules and regulation, there's a lot of things that, um, that is interpreted as cannot be done. So that's when we also like hustle, go and meet the regulators asking what, what is it that can be done and cannot be done? Where are we moving in terms of, e uh, uh, in terms of uh, technology? Mm -hmm. What you realize is, uh, Dr. Kang, uh, with healthcare, right, there is a, a lot of problems to be solved mm -hmm. within the industry, right? So we are talking about us in, you, in IMU and I'm here in Damansara, um, our ratio of uh, patient to doctors in this part of the country is one to uh, say one to 300, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Our national ratio is about one to 600. Mm -hmm. I think the country is moving about uh, one, one doctor to 400 population, which is, which is great, right? Mm -hmm. But you move to, uh, I was born in Kelantan. In Kelantan, the ratio is one to 800. And I think in Sabah and Sarawak, it's one to 1,000. See, mm -hmm. see, those are the problems that I want to solve. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you ask your students, right, every, I think 90% when they become a doctor, right, they want to stay in KL, right? <laughs> or Penang or JB. <laughs> right? So, Go on. So, so I realized that this is, not, um, this is not a numbers problem, right? This is basically, right, it's, it's, there is a gap. There is a real gap in the, when you go out of this privileged town, right? Uh, there is a real gap among the rural communities or out-of-towners or people who just uh, doesn't have immediate access to doctors. Mm -hmm. And we also don't know what can be done or what cannot be done virtually. Over the first year, two years, we learned that what problems we solve. We solve, uh, um, we discovered that a lot of, 75% um, of our customers are women. So if you look at the data, 75% that people are come for to the doctor are, are women. And uh, wh what we discover is uh, women are typically the, the health, the real health seekers. Men only care about themselves or one thing, <laughs> right? So any child issue, any other issues, uh, right? Uh, the, 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 this always come and seek for proper help, right? What we discover is there are um, people in... Uh, uh, in, in the East Coast, uh, for example, in Plantan, Trenganu, Pahang, right? Mm -hmm. They're not comfortable talking about uh, birth control. Mm -hmm. So they don't go in person to ask the doctor, so how do I do birth control or how do I do... Um, uh, so that, uh, I have like menstrual, uh, menstrual issue and all that, right? Those are private things that they are not comfortable and those are something that they can actually discuss with doctors, asking questions rather than reading on the internet and then start self-medicating, right? Yep. So, so that is a big, I see that, okay, this is, uh, this telehealth is not going anywhere, mm -hmm. right? So, so there is a real use case here, mm -hmm. right? Now it's just our uh, role here as, as one of the first uh, player in the market 
we need to educate the public, we need to educate the, the regulators, we need to educate the government in terms of uh, uh, putting, pushing this uh, telehealth agenda forward, mm -hmm. right? So, so the first two years, there's a lot of uh, uh, homework uh, being done, there's a lot of uh, engagement being done, money zero, mm -hmm. right? Uh, pretty much like I can I can tell you that right you know you just uh, uh, if you're interested uh, later you can ask me like you know how do we survive um, uh, then uh, then pandemic happened mm -hmm. uh, right so pandemic when pandemic happens uh, Wuhan virus because of Wuhan virus that time right that's when like you know people are rushing to clinic kesihatan to get tested, rushing to go ask doctors in, in in all the public healthcare system, and it's clogging the system within a day, right? So that's when we started working with uh, KKM during that time to introduce this channel, where patient can come and read about uh, 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 COVID nineteen, and then like they can do self assessment and then talk to doctors if they really need to, right? So. We, during that time in March last year, we hosted over 5 million people through our platform mm -hmm. just to, to, to handle, to, to, to funnel that question. So now if you think about healthcare or public health, right, that's, this, this whole funneling approach uh, should be like the main thing, right? Or, or in, in, in the doctor's world, is triaging, right? Yes. Yeah. So you cannot have everyone rush to the hospital. Growing up, we always say like, you know, whatever that you have, cough and cold, just go to the hospital, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so there is a, I mean, there is a real uh, critical need now, so that people understand that you know at what level of uh, 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 illness that they need to rush to hospital. Other than that, they must monitor at home or do something at home, mm -hmm. probably uh, monitored and assessed by the doctors, a bit virtually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you've showed us there's a pent up demand for telling health, hmm. but there's also a, I spot an issue here. How do you bridge the urban and the rural divide in terms of telling health? Okay, so um, the, uh, the, 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 the urban uh, for me, it's, um, I think the, the mobile penetration in Malaysia is about 90, uh, 92%, 90 plus percent already. The internet penetration is uh, actually way over 90%, right? But if you ask about healthcare penetration, do we have enough uh, doctors and nurses in every single corner of the country? I think we're probably much less, I think in the region of like 60, 70%, right? Um, and when it's available as well, right, you... <coughs> I uh, will they be available at the time you need it? You need them, right? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes, so so the, our our goal has always been bridging that gap through digital, mm -hmm. right? So the first is providing a platform where doctors can speak to patient, mm -hmm. right? Second is providing a platform where doctors can send medication to the patient, mm -hmm. okay? All right? Um, now uh, then um, then uh, third is if you have uh, the third is moving towards, um, uh, you know, some people need uh, a med uh, testing done, but they don't have access to the nearest doctors or clinic, yes. right? Or they're not. Uh, I mean, you, you need your 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 old parents during this time of COVID. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take them out, right? So we can even send nurse to the house to take your blood. Mm -hmm. and send it to the lab and then the, the results come out and you can discuss with the doctors virtually right mm -hmm. so we call that a uh, doc at home right mm -hmm. uh, we, we we don't really send doctors yet right but we send nurses uh, to to do a basic medical uh, checkup and then uh, get the blood test done uh, and so so you see how um, we actually rather instead of just a you know a platform to have a chat with the doctor so we move uh, one by one right to close that gap, right? So, uh, so once you uh, and 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 the DG or KKM has always been talking about uberization of healthcare, right? This is it, right? This is exactly what we are doing, because uh, he already said that in in many speeches that we can't afford to build hospitals and clinics in every town and mukim, mm -hmm. right? It's just not feasible, and that's not 
how it's done in in, in it's not been done in any other countries mm -hmm. right um, and the, the resources are limited there's no point uh, then we spoke to this uh, there's this um, prominent figure from Sabah for instance mm -hmm. he said I built a, a charity clinic mm -hmm. in, uh, in 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 a place in Sabah mm -hmm. I spent about 300,000 ringgit but for the whole year, I could not get any doctors to come and work there. Yeah. Right. So I, so so that that's a real concern, right? It's so, uh, yes, you know, the government can 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 force the doctors to go there. But at the end of the day, those are the people who, and it will be like you no know, doctors changing after doctors and after doctors, right? It's not really good. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really help the community over there, right? Mm -hmm. But what if they have, whenever they need. Uh, understandable it's a bit remote you can't really have a you might only have a nurse or medical assistant there you can't have a doctors uh, all the time mm -hmm. but whenever they need you can connect to doctors virtually mm -hmm. and the nurse or whoever on the ground can help the patient okay. right in terms of physical in terms of doing dressing or whatnot yeah, yeah. okay now th this is a time where i just want to remind everyone that's online with us right now that uh, it is possible for you all to post questions to the host, all right? And the host will then filter the questions and send it to me. And I can ask those questions directly to Haswan. We already have one ready question for you, Haswan, and that is about mental health. How do you propose that uh, your setup, that is Doctor on Call, uh, help to mitigate mental health issues, especially during the period of this pandemic? Do, does your platform have got uh, certified mental health therapists? Back to you. I think we recently onboarded two. Um, as part of our specialist onboarding, we have uh, two psychiatrists. Um, okay, so mental health um, is a, a, a growing issue. However, in Malaysia, it was the most underdiagnosed problem. Yep. Right? So, so I think uh, many of us know that um, life is tough, right? So people go through phases, cycles, right? You know, uh, you you can't you 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 finish school, you have a financial problem, you you can't find a job, you can't you have family to support. Uh, I mean, the, the I mean, so so there's so many things that happening, and um, it, it was a taboo, like you know, whenever you you say, oh, I'm depressed, right? I say, oh, you are so dramatic. <laughs> uh, but uh, because I when when I was in the US, right, this is this is always been a big thing among the universities, mm -hmm. right? So they always say they even okay don't use this, but uh, I I I, uh, I took this one class. I was I was doing well in that class. In one exam, right, I just uh, I was blank and I couldn't answer a single question. And my professor came and asked, what's going on? I was acing that class, right? The, throughout the throughout the term, right? And then I was like, I don't know. I I just I just blank, right? So he asked me to, okay, can you go to the health center? And then I actually sat down with a psychiatrist, uh, I mean a, a therapist to ask what's going on. I said, so they say, oh, you have an anxiety attacks and all that. I'm gonna diagnose, and then your professor is gonna let you resit for the test. Mm -hmm. So they actually take that very uh, seriously, right? So here is that like you fail, you fail, uh, right? <laughs> you cannot answer. <laughs> so 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 it's very systemic in the way they do. But here, um, I mean, I tell you about the most basic thing. First is access to uh, uh, counselors, or in in universities, I think you still have access to 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 counselors and and help for if you have a problem, right? But in the world out there, right, it's not common for people. Oh, I need to find a psychiatrist. Only for urban people knows, right? But if you are you are in a in a smaller town or a bit, it, this is not the norm, uh, especially in the in the Malay community as well, right? I mean, seeking for uh, psychological mental health help is is almost like a taboo, yes. right? Uh, but a lot of awareness has been done. We want to bridge, uh, make it more affordable and accessible to the masses, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have, uh, however, uh, I think there are a lot of mental health professionals out there mm -hmm. that is still not available for easy access, mm -hmm. uh, right? So, so we are reaching out to, to some of them 
uh, at this time of time, we are trying to push uh, the agenda of can people talk to you virtually, right, mm -hmm. without coming in person. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that's not the easiest thing to do. Uh, a lot of like uh, specialists and uh, are still pushing back in terms of meeting the patient virtually. Mm -hmm. But I think for mental health itself, right, um, uh, there should be a, a, a wide range of counselors and psychiatrists and psychologists who can come forward and, and help out whoever need it. And the other thing is, um, of course, prices are quite prohibitive for many people, mm -hmm. right? We have doctors here who are actually handling some of these issues. Uh, our GP doctors who are, who are actually uh, talking to patients, they, when they discover, oh, this patient actually have some sort of uh, depression and all, the doctor just keep talking to them. And we don't put time limit on our consult, right? Mm -hmm. If the doctors want to talk as long as possible, they go ahead and do it. But it's also a prerogative of the doctors how to speak. So, uh, but from time to time, we do have uh, people reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. But it's just that, uh, Dr. Khan, I have to be honest with you, mental health is still, uh, we are still learning in terms of how to solve the problem at the, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of providing the access, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't have a silver bullet solution right now in terms of addressing that. We're slowly like getting more people to use it. Um, it's just that whether or not we reach out to the right people who need it, mm -hmm. uh, it's still a question mark. Right, we 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 don't know how to reach out to this uh, group of people. Right, good. Thank thank you for that. But so it looks like some of the challenges for organisations like you, like Doctor on Call, is that education is also part of the thing that you've got to work on. Whereby you got to educate the public, you get to, to educate the health providers as well on what is possible and what perhaps will be the next stage on the evolution of your processes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, I've got more questions coming in, some very interesting questions here. So one question is about legality. What's the legal liability of giving advice remotely? Is there a disclaimer on how will the consumer be assured on the accuracy of the advice? How about that, Haswan? Can you answer that? Um, so uh, I've always maintained that um, you know, I um, I don't set the... So whenever the doctor speak to the patient, it is their prerogative in terms of uh, asking enough questions and do enough uh, distant uh, assessment <laughs> uh, to, um, to, 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 to examine the patient. If they can't, right? Because they are liable for every patient, right? If they can't assess the patient, they say that like, I, I, I cannot give you diagnosis or I cannot uh, actually ascertain like what you have, right? It, they, are, they, they can always direct the patient for physical assessment, physical clinic, go to, uh, they can write a referral through a platform, go to the specialist mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and all that, right? So, so, um, so, so we, 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 we engage with law doctors we have an in-house uh, medical lead who actually help uh, actually understanding, uh, uh, looking at this some risk uh, uh, area, right? But at the end of the day, right? Uh, even the MMC come up with the guidelines, right? It's uh, up to the doctors in terms of how you do it, but it doesn't, it doesn't relieve you from your obligation, right? In terms of giving the right advice or right uh, next steps for the patient. Uh, it's not about, uh, I think it's not about accuracy. It's about uh, advising the patient the right thing to do, mm -hmm. right? If you, can, of course, you can do diagnosis, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, testing virtually, right? Uh, for example, I can look at your face. Uh, oh, I think you have a high blood pressure by looking at your face, right? Even though there are some AI technology now has been, uh, I, I've seen that uh, lying around that like, talking about looking at the face and then check the vitals. Right, but uh, but we are not there yet. Mm -hmm. So so uh, so it, 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 it we we leave it to the doctors uh, to to make that decision, right? Mm -hmm. And you see, right? Uh, even if you in a normal circumstances, you go to if you for the same symptoms or illness, you go to five different clinics, mm -hmm. you might get five different kind of um, medication or treatment. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned as well. I thought it's a one size fits all kind of. I said, oh okay, I didn't realize some doctors might be a bit giving something else mm -hmm. might have different approach. I just want to answer this, uh, this chat question about uh, someone commenting that I call it Wuhan virus. I think you missed the earlier part of my conversation. I said, 
during that time in March, people were still calling this COVID-19 Wuhan virus. Mm -hmm. This is when people are scared of bats. They're coming online asking, like, oh, I have a lot of bats at home, right? You know, like, uh, is it safe? And people are ignorant, right? And at that time, people are asking, oh, I've interacted with uh, someone who looks like they're from China, right? Uh, will I get COVID-19? No, will I get Wuhan virus? Mm -hmm. So that's a context of when I said Wuhan virus just now. Mm -hmm. So I'm just uh, telling you the, the, the story. Okay, thank, thank you for that, that feedback. But I also am, am interested to find out that, look, you've, you've started off from a completely different background, which is actual science. You found a need, meaning that you did your homework, okay? Look for a pent up demand, found that there's a market for that, realized that you needed at least two years worth of you know, income somewhere to tie you over so that you know, then your business could be successful. But other than that, what other background skills did you think you required in order to solve all these problems to become the entrepreneur that you are right now? Can you share some of these skills, some of these transferable skills that either you already had that you now enhance or that you realized you didn't have, you reflected on it, and now you had to build it up? What's the... Um, I would say uh, that there's a few phases of learning mm -hmm. um, from personally, right? Uh, when you're in uni, you learn the most basic stuff, right? Basically fundamentals, right? Mm -hmm. You learn how to calculate interest. You learn how to, uh, you learn how to do math, right? You learn how to um, have a basic, always oh, uh, uh, learn about basic marketing or you learn, uh, or whatever it is that you learn, it turned out to be only just to fill the small gaps in what you actually need in the real world. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when I started uh, in the previous uh, life in, 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 in Accenture, in consulting, you learn about, oh, okay, it's all about problem solving, mm -hmm. right? Whatever it is you need, the research that you need to do to solve the problem, mm -hmm. you learn about uh, stakeholder management, mm -hmm. right? So you need to make, keep your client happy, right? Mm -hmm um that is a biggest thing right how do i get the client to agree to my proposal right so that's what that is a biggest thing that uh uh everyone have to know uh, right how do i get my sup uh, superior agree to my ideas mm -hmm. right so it's all about people management and uh of course you uh the uh in terms of the kind of different approach and research on how to solve a different uh, problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, then, um, so so in that firm, I learned, okay, you know, we need to have a good strategy and then we translate to business plan. From business plan, we translate to campaigns and initiatives, right? Um, then you, when you, then I started Dr. On Call, and you're basically running your own company, right? Uh, it's a completely different ballgame. You have all that vision, but at the end of the day, like the execution on the ground, right? How do I get my, I have a platform now, you know, building what you can control is, yes, I can put in, get hire a few programmers, build the platform, whatever the requirement, I want this button, that button, that features and all that. Those are easy part. The hard part is actually, how do I get my first 10 customers? Mm -hmm. you know, that's not your brothers or your, your parents, right? <laughs> um, that is the hard part, right? So you, um, you, that's when I, okay, uh, I thought I know digital marketing. It's so easy, right? You just do Facebook ads, you know, I'm sure you get some clients. No, it's not. We are burning uh, when we don't have money, right? Uh, those Facebook ads to reach out to clients, right? Uh, and Google ads, all the spend, all the paid stuff is very easy, yeah. right, to do. But it's very expensive, right? You know, do you have twenty thousand ringgit a month to burn just on the Facebook or Google, mm -hmm. right? But we were, uh, we thought that's the way to grow, and so we're putting money in that, and then we realized, okay, this is not sustainable. Like mm -hmm. almost like I'm buying customer, right? You know, five ringgit per cast. Uh, that time, you know, out of that, we spend ten thousand a month. We get like first month, we have probably like you know ten customer. Mm -hmm. Right. It is uh, very, uh, I would say, uh, tough and uh, 
lonely journey, right? I can't, I don't even dare to tell, oh, I only have 10 customers this month, right? But it was, it, it is what it is. And it's the same for every single venture that you have, unless you're already at the Elon Musk level, right? So it's like, oh, I want to be, everyone wants to be Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, right? But it is uh, not that simple. They are like one in a million, right? But when they first started as well, if you read about Amazon, right? Uh, when Alibaba started, they have the same exact challenges, right? Getting the first thousand customers is not easy. Yep. There's a lot of convincing. There's a lot of uh, uh, fine tuning that was done uh, to get to the first thousand customers, right? So, so uh, that's uh, one. Uh, th that's one thing. Second thing is um, in this current world, mm -hmm. right? Um, we had the honor to be a part of Alibaba e founders program. When we went to Alibaba campus just before COVID-19 started, mm -hmm. right? Um, they are doing online transactions at about 500,000 transactions per second, mm -hmm. right? During their 12, 12, 11, 11 sales and, and whatnot, right? 500,000, I said, I haven't, over the four years, I don't even have that kind of transaction, right? 500,000. So, so you see, right, in the, in the future world, right, it's going to be a different ball game. So what we learn uh, in, in, in school might be like pretty much irrelevant, right? We always have to upgrade our knowledge in terms of digital skill, uh, the digital marketing, uh, uh, digital transactions, right? How do we achieve whatever that, that the world is moving towards? Everything is automated in China, right? So that's what people are moving to. And they, they have a vending machine. Um, uh, I mean, they have this one minute clinic. Uh, so we also had the honor to be hosted by uh, Ping An Good Doctor mm -hmm. in China. It's the same as, uh, <laughs> it's basically the same platform as Dr. Hong Kong, but on a China scale, which is, a, you know, they, they are doing close to a million consultations a day. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so we, we, we learn from them, right? We see, look, if I have a child today, right? If I want them to learn, I said, I would probably like, you know, put them in Alibaba Business School and let them learn what is really needed in the future. But that translates to everything, the logistics, right? Uh, the marketing, the logistics, right? How do you handle 500,000 purchases in a day, mm -hmm. right? So, um, so, uh, Bringing back to this context, right? Um, we have quite a number of uh, medical grads uh, who who come and join our platform uh, as, uh, to do various things, to do marketing, to do uh, patient care stuff uh, uh, in Doctor On Call, mm -hmm. right? I think so far we have over 150 of them that joined us uh, before they start the housemanship. Um, uh, and what they learn here is something that I would say like this is actually the opportunity for them, uh, for, for you guys to learn mm -hmm. before you enter your housemanship because in, it's not that you need digital marketing as a doctor, but eventually you will need it one way or another, mm -hmm. right, at the end of the day. So, so, so many of them are actually taking this one or two years of gap years before they start housemanship to to learn about these other skills, search engine optimization, search engine marketing, you know, how do people search us on the internet, right? So, so there's a lot of things that we, uh, I did, and I learned myself as well, right, uh, throughout this journey. And I actually uh, like to share that with um, people that, that may not have this opportunity. Yeah. We have other questions. Some new questions, uh, uh, where do you expect where do you expect to in terms of services? Do you consider would you like to consider uh, nutrition and dietetics as one of the services that you want to expand into, for example? Uh, right now we have already expanded to uh, allied health uh, services. Okay, so you're talking about dietetics, nutrition. Um, we are expanding into TCM even. Oh, good. Uh, so we just onboarded uh, uh, a TCM uh, outfit uh, to our platform because we realized that everyone, 
uh, as long as it's uh, it's uh, this this field, so we, <laughs> we 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 cannot onboard the the I mean the the, the, the non-approved uh, medical practitioner lah, right? So only whatever the field that is uh, approved as a valid uh, healthcare professional, uh, we uh, we we can onboard them. Uh, have you thought about moving into AI or machine learning, and would that also serve your outfit and doctor on call? to help filter and get some form, you know, a rapid response before the doctor comes in? Um, uh, we thought of that. Uh, there are many players globally, like uh, Babylon in the UK, uh, who actually selling their, so we have the AI or machine learning okay. uh, capability. Uh, in China, beyond Guru, they have all this virtual doctor, virtual doctor that is assisting you. Uh, but essentially what they do is um, they have all this, uh, they have all this um, uh, almost like the machine learning AI uh, questionnaires that, uh, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, that is offered to the patient. But at the end of the day, like uh, the doctor still like, you know, okay, I, I, it, it's a bit like a checklist, right? So imagine if you're a doctor in the office, so the robot has already asked, you know, all the 10 questions that you need to ask. And then every day you just need to look at the, uh, and then basically there's a recommendation okay. of uh, whatever that uh, uh, the diagnosis or, or medication. Then the doctor just need to approve it, right? So okay, okay this is uh, pretty much uh, basic. So uh, we 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 are right now venturing into AI uh, uh, for certain things that to improve our operations. Mm -hmm. We haven't really. Uh, uh, I think that this, there'll be quite some time before we can actually introduce AI doctor to the market, right? And I think that is uh, that is something that has to be done with the, the industry as a, as a whole, right? Because right now I can tell you uh, if there are any um, other entrepreneurs on this call or um, pushing telehealth forward is has been a long and arduous journey, mm -hmm. right? As I said, right, nine people, including uh, nine out of ten people, would say like, "No, you can't do that. It's not safe." Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't. I, it's not safe, right? So the last four is everyone been saying, uh, but then, uh, but then there are, you know, the government is very supportive in terms of pushing forward the digital health and all this, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just that that is, um, you know, what uh, Barnes and Noble are, tell, are telling Amazon, right? Uh, no, it's the online uh, selling books online that would not work. Right, I know selling stuff online would not work, right? Um, but I think we we have to be uh, recognized that uh, that's the way the world is moving for uh, moving forward, and it's not just uh, about whether or not it's uh, work or doesn't work, right? It's the way, it's the uh, how people or you know the billions of people behave towards, right? If um, if you think about it, if hundred patients are looking for uh, you know. Uh, for uh, questions to be answered online because they're already Googling, right? And if you're not offering your advice online, they will be starting to Google and self-medicating. It's even more dangerous, yeah. right? So the healthcare professionals have to establish their presence online, mm -hmm. right? Because that's just the way people say healthcare these days. Yeah. Right? I think you, you brought up a very, very important uh, point. That is, if someone doesn't provide it, somebody else will provide it, isn't it? All right. Now, uh, I've also got a few more questions popping down in, some very interesting ones. Do you, for example, Ian, doctor on call, do you share your medical records with the hospitals or with uh, the Ministry of Health, for example? Uh, in terms of medical record, I think uh, by law in Malaysia, it belongs to the uh, institution. Right, so if you go to IMU, the medical record belongs to IMU. Okay. Right, um, but uh, what we are pro uh, we are big proponent of you own the patient must own their own medical record, mm -hmm. right? So if I want to meet Doctor Ka, oh, sorry, I I, <laughs> I keep forgetting that you're not a medical doctor. But say uh, I meet this doctor, I have this med medical record. Doctor, look at my record. Mm -hmm. This is all the past medication, past prescription that was given to me. This is my past data. So I want we we are a big proponent of giving back the ownership of medical record to the patient, mm -hmm. right? So whether I'm in 
even if I have to go back for Chinese New Year in Penang, I can see another doctor there. Doctors can see, oh, okay, you have been taking this medication. You have been taking mm -hmm. this, right? So, so for me, um, a medical record has to be back to the in the patient's hand, and it has to be continuous. Mm -hmm. All right. The problem with us now is if the doctor owns the medical record, you know, it's not. Um, uh, so, so there's also this uh, in, in primary care, the concept of family doctor, for instance, right? So growing up, you know, we always go back to the same family doctor, right? Yep. However, right, uh, people move, you know, digital world uh, ha has kicked in, right? Mm -hmm. That is not uh, feasible anymore, mm -hmm. right? Because the, uh, the, 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 the doctor that have seen us since we were a child might not be around anymore, right? So, so how do you make sure that there's a real continuity in medical care, mm -hmm. right? The problems that you have. The only way is digital, mm -hmm. right? So if you own that record, then every doctor must have access to that record uh, uh, so that they can give a continuous medical care. Yeah. Good. And that is a bigger problem to solve before you even get to the AI. <laughs> Yes. Okay. A few questions also coming this way. How do you select your doctors for Doctor on Call? What What are your criteria? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, we 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 welcome all uh, doc all qualified doctors must have APC, right? Okay. Um, but most importantly, right, we don't just do uh, allow doctors to just self sign up and okay, tada! I, I want to uh, talk to doctor, talk to my patient now, right? Mm -hmm. um, we what we discovered is um, on, via virtual channel mm -hmm. because we are very big on making sure that the customers are happy with the service and all that, right? Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that the doctors are uh, compliant um, with certain standard, right? So, for instance, right, uh, we said, right, uh, the, the first time you speak to customer, you must introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dr. Kang. How may I, how may I help you? Mm -hmm. Right. But trust me, this one line, this one magical line, right, mm -hmm. has been an uphill battle to train to make sure that all our medical uh, practitioners are using it. Mm -hmm. All right. It's, it's just that uh, it, it's a different kind of training, it, 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 different kind of training because the doctors may not. Uh, usually do that in the clinic, right? Hi, I'm Dr. Ka, how might I help you, right? So, we say, okay, uh, so what's your problem? Right, you know, tell me. <laughs> so, so that, uh, uh, when I told you, right, I was talking to uh, too many doctors to find out step by step in terms of how to create an in-clinic experience online, mm -hmm. right? I have to deduce myself, right? okay, first introduction, then um, assessment, then, um, you know, whatever the decision and all that, right? We, we have we, we sort of have some training program for, for the doctors to deliver their consult online mm -hmm. from technical oh. perspective and uh, uh, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. uh, etiquette perspective as well. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you the effect uh, in the clinic is a bit different. If people don't blast up uh, their doctors uh, unnecessarily, uh, right? Uh, even though the doctors doesn't introduce themselves, but over the telehealth platform, Right, it needs to be followed with certain standard because uh, the customers get uh, are less patient. Mm -hmm. The patient are less patient, right? <laughs> right. So we need to make sure that you know we maintain certain standard. Uh, that uh, so so we have now over hundred uh, doctors, GP doctors who are actually providing uh, this uh, telehealth services uh, online. Uh, we have a lot, of course, a lot of specialists as well. Uh, we have um, more, about 800 specialists now like that, that, that uh, joined us on board. For the specialists, it, it's a bit different. Uh, I think we don't, we don't really like, you know, uh, we only do technical training for them. We mm -hmm. leave it to them in terms of how they want to handle their patients. Mm -hmm. Right, but we maintain a, must have a basic, uh, uh, basic protocol. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, let me just give... So any doctors are welcome to, to join us. They can just drop an email, uh, contact at uh, .com .my. Um okay. And then we, we, we have a certain uh, procedure uh, to, to onboard them. We do some verification and then they can join on board. We also now allow clinics to uh, set up their practice online okay. and get themselves known. Uh, the good thing is uh, if, if you own one clinic, for instance, right? Uh, oh, your doctor, you... Uh, you think, okay, I'm going to establish online and I'm going to get to thousands of patients. 
it is uh, we have gone through that journey for the last in the last four years. We have gone from hundred patients a month, uh, sorry, hundred visitors to our site a month, mm -hmm. to about two point five million visitors a month over the four years, right? So we have a lot of people coming to the platform to to look for answers, okay. right? So uh, so we we always tell you can establish your presence here, you immediately have access to all these uh, millions of eyeballs and customers who are looking for specific doctors or specific specialists closest to them. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank, thank you very much. I think that's uh, you, you've covered quite comprehensively some of the questions I wanted to, to ask you. You've introduced yourself, the challenges in setting up your business, okay, the direction you're going, uh, future uh, enhancements which uh, you needed to move into, uh, medical record challenges, uh, AI and machine learning, okay? And uh, I think we've also answered some of the questions that have been coming in from our audience as well. Now, for our audience benefit, uh, what we're going to do is this session is actually recorded. We will post it online after some uh, editing. We'll post it on the IMU IPCDU website. So stay, uh, stay connected with us, we will advertise it. And some of the questions which were not answered in today's discussion, we will also post it on YouTube. You know, YouTube allows question and answer. And I hope, uh, Haswan, you would consent to answering some questions uh, once sure. they post it up there. It's to continue this journey and to continue the conversation even, even further, okay? And uh, when we upload the video, it's about that. It's we will snip all the noisy parts in there. You know where where we had the audio invasion earlier. So we'll snip all those bits up, and we'll make sure it's a nice smooth experience for everyone. Only one last thing that I want all of us to do, and I hope everyone is listening and haven't not only muted themselves. Okay, I want a group photo. Okay, so. Can everyone who's listening to me, please turn on your videos, please, right? Call to everyone, please turn on your videos. Video one, not microphone, just turn on your video, okay? I see more and more videos appearing and I see that uh, our team is also monitoring it. Please turn on your videos. We want to take a group photo. So Najwa and Doreen, you're both monitoring it, right? Okay, how's the how's the video looking right now? I see a lot of people have consented to their looks, whether they have makeup or not. I didn't put on any makeup, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> All right. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Good to okay. see faces. So uh, Najwa, you tell us when you want to take the photo. Uh, on your count. Okay, on my count. All right, I'll count from three to one. We'll take it at one. So ready? Three, two, one, smile. Okay, one more for good luck, okay? All right. All right. Doreen's turn now. Again, I'm going to count three to one and we'll take the photo at one. Three, two, one. Doreen, your turn. Smile. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So Haswan, it's been great to have you here, okay? You've explained a lot to us, all right? We will continue this conversation further via the, the edited video, uh, which we will post yeah. on uh, YouTube. So you are open for anyone to apply to you for uh, the doctor on call. Yeah, but we have, or, uh, I told Dr. Kang yesterday that we have quite a great number of uh, IMU graduates who join us uh, part-time or internship. Uh, so, so, so we're quite happy to have more of you guys. Great. You know, yes, uh, Haswan told me that. So if any of you IMU students are looking for internship, you know, you can apply to Haswan directly, but also keep us involved. I, I'm from IPCDU, Industry Partnership and Career Development Unit. Keep us informed because we need to keep track of where you go to. And I'm sure, you know, privately, uh, Haswan will update us also. Lah. Okay, if we've got any IMU grad, uh, students or graduates working with you, uh, because it's it's great to know. We need to know. We have at least five or six of them in the office now. Ah, good. <laughs> Say hello to them from me, uh, from yes. IMU. Okay. Sure. Uh, so thank you very much, Aswan. You've been our inaugural dialogue with CEO. We have many more coming this way. 
Uh, I'm not going to tell our audience who else we've got planned, but uh, you'll be very surprised that the CEOs we've got lined up. Okay, we'll right. make this uh, annually. We'll have about three or four such events. So watch out for this space soon. We've got tons of activities coming up. We've got hackathons. We've got uh, uh, webinars on the future of work, uh, the challenges in which uh, Industry 4.0 would you know, challenge us on how workspace would change. And we've got tons of other activities coming. It's going to be an exciting space to watch online. So all it remains, Haswan, is for me to thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts, okay, for being our very first dialogue with CEO. Thank you for being so open with us. And thank you, everyone, for coming in and have a great uh, rest of the week and Chinese New Year. Okay? Thank you and goodbye. See you soon. Bye. 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 Thanks again, Haswan. Thank you, Dr. Kang. You're welcome.